Greetings, everyone. Okay, so uh, a few things to get to uh, before the main topic. First, um, Silent Hill 2 Remake. So uh, I've been getting a lot of comments on that, and there are some people talking about it in the um, Matrix uh, chat that we have. That uh, link, by the way, is available on my website if you want to join our group in the Matrix chat. So Silent Hill 2 game remake, pretty cool. Um, you know, it's not something I'm necessarily, it's not on my radar. Maybe I'll play it sometime in the future, but um, right now I've got so many other projects that I'm working on. So, um, but feel free to ask questions or comment or whatever. And no, I still not, I'm not interested in doing a Silent Hill 4 uh, analysis or anything like that. I'm not completely um, shutting the door on any Silent Hill 2 stuff. Uh, in fact, I do have at least one uh, sort of idea um, kind of in the background that I made. The, uh, it may turn into a project. It may not uh, have to do with Silent Hill. I don't know. If it's if it's interesting enough to me, then maybe I'll do it. Okay. Um, second thing. Oh, uh, Odyssey. Guys, go on my Odyssey channel. Reinstall Paul on Odyssey. Link is in the description. And give me a follow there. Um, Odyssey is actually uh, taking ads out completely, which I think is pretty cool because I flip and hate ads. I don't even monetize my YouTube channel um, because I just don't want to put a bunch of nonsense ads of stuff that I just personally uh, would not have um, products I wouldn't purchase. Um, so why would I want any of that stuff in my video just so I can um, get money? I'd rather you guys uh, support me directly uh, whether you want to or not, that's your choice, of course, then by, uh, putting some sort of, uh, ads in front of your face where you have no choice. <clears throat> that's just my philosophy on that. So, um, in, uh, along those lines, my website, reinstallpaul.com, I do have a member site or really a donator site. You can go there, you can sign up and I think it's like three or four bucks. Um, you can, get access to all of the uh, premium content and there is a lot of good stuff on there. So consider uh, directly supporting my work and um, you know, I don't have any ads on my site or anything like that. It's just completely up to you if you want to support my work or not. So the topic is awareness and looking at some of your comments uh, from last week and uh, really the week before, these are all kind of, uh, related. It seems like we've, we've gotten to the point where in, in our discussion, uh, our sort of dialogue, if we want to call it, um, where it's kind of naturally kind of brought up AI and, you know, what does that, what, what does awareness mean and what does AI mean? And will it ever be fully self-aware? And I think the consensus view, at least for everyone who's commented, and probably, I can't speak for everyone, obviously, but a lot of people that are watching this video probably are skeptical at this point that AI is really going to have the level or the depth of awareness that a human being or even an animal. And so we're left with this, um, you know, we're left with this sort of, uh, exercise where we're contending or thinking about, well, what does it mean to be aware in the first place? And I think maybe it's a natural instinct or maybe it's just conditioning that we tend to think about, well, what caused it, right? What was the a priori uh, first cause of awareness, and of course, the reductionist scientific view is that, well, awareness or consciousness or the intellect and, and all those sorts of things are just sort of a ancillary effect, um, a byproduct of um, this sort of random amalgamation of physical fundamental uh, operations that sort of make life and whatever. But I'm going to maybe offer a different sort of um, 
way to think about this, the way I've been thinking about it. And in my view, I don't think there's any, it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any value in trying to decode how or why consciousness or awareness arose in the first place. So if you really think about awareness and you treat it instead of just uh, an artifact that had some presumed beginning and some development that continues on, if you think about it that way, if you think about something that wasn't, you know, that did not exist and then suddenly exists and then you're trying to find the root cause, well, maybe that premise is actually flawed. Maybe the premise that there's some beginning or there was some before, before it was even created, there was some, you know, like primordial, you know, pre-beginning before the Big Bang, for example, but we're talking about, you know, awareness now. Instead of presuming that, what if we just, what if we look at awareness as a process without being um, really sort of uh, attached to this, it must have a beginning. Let's, let's just presume that it's a process that has always continued, okay? Let's just, let's just have that premise and see where that takes us. So with that sort of premise, if, if we treat awareness as a process that is never a fixed sort of thing, right? It's, it's something that just sort of develops and unfolds in ways that are um, just commensurate with the way awareness operates. And one fundamental operation of awareness, and I'll leave you with this, at least to me, one fundamental operation of awareness is that it's always expanding, okay? You could make, I guess, a comparison of the expansion of the universe in a sense. I'm not saying those two are exactly the same, although I believe that to be true because of my metaphysics. I do feel, I can't articulate it in any intellectual terms or rational terms. However, um, my intuition informs uh, my awareness to such a degree that I, anyway, I tend to believe that the, um, the you know, the, the physical uh, reductionist view of reality is, is really the opposite of what we're experiencing. And so if I think about awareness as a process instead of some, something that did not exist came into existence, because if you think about if you think about the process of awareness not existing and then it exists, well, you still haven't dealt with the fact that something didn't exist and it comes into existence. Well, what's that realm of existence that it pops into? Well, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the very essence of reality itself. And I think that's integral and completely um, intertwined and is awareness itself. That's how complicatedly, complicatedly, that's how strange and complicated a paradox uh, it is that we inhabit is that, you know, we are awareness itself manifested in millions and millions of ways interacting uh, with itself. And we are essentially a process, an ongoing, never ending process that's trying to understand itself. Well, you can't define a process that's not finished. You can't define a, an operation when that operation uh, never stands still, right? You can, you can describe something in reality, but as soon as the ink's dry, the description is not, well, it never was. The description never was fully one-to-one, -one, but as soon as the ink dries, that description becomes even uh, changed itself because something in reality, awareness has unfolded in a certain way that makes that uh, whatever you wrote down irrelevant, right? So I guess what I'm, what I'm getting at is that 
if we think of awareness or, or, or if we just think of like evolutionary development and we frame that through awareness as a process, then at least to me, I think reality starts to make a lot more sense. And one conclusion I can make about reality when framed in those terms is that when we try to describe or explain a process in rational terms, then things start to get weird because within a certain rational human framework, we can make things, we can, we can navigate reality in a way that makes sense. Okay. But when we get into the real quantum sort of really deep existential stuff, things start to really break down radically. And I think, that is largely due, and especially like the nature of consciousness has always eluded like reductionist scientist, uh, the, the, the reductionist uh, scientific uh, point of view. And I think that's because we want, we presume there's a beginning, maybe there's an end. Well, but we presume, uh, I guess if there is a beginning, there must be an end, right? At least that's, that kind of makes sense. But if we, instead approach this idea of awareness and reality itself is kind of the same thing. And we approach it as a process that has always been in some sense and is always changing and always unfolding. Then we can sort of conclude that, well, if we're making rational conclusions about something, which is entirely uh, for all, for all intents and purposes, irrational, if we're talking, if we're trying to describe in rational terms, a process which is inherently irrational, then that has something to say about rationality itself, right? That kind of implies that, well, it's sort of irrational to even believe that you're making a rational statement or conclusion about a process that is essentially irrational. Does that make sense? So something without a beginning or end, a process that is continuing forever cannot be defined. And if it cannot be defined, um, I think that's okay because the process may, um, I mean, do we need to control it in the sense that we can define it anyway? Right? Because that's what it feels like to me is a lot of, to a lot of the, uh, feeling to a lot of the purpose of defining something, at least it feels like there's some sort of desire to control that. And it, it kind of makes sense in that, you know, we want to control things as far as not, uh, as far as survivability. Cause remember we, you know, at the beginning of this discussion, this was, this was about the strongest instinct in any animal and that's survival. And so in a, in a survival sense, in an irrational, um, if the world is irrational, if, if, if this process of reality isn't necessarily a rational process, at least in, in, in the sense that if we are part of the process, if we are the process, we are in this field of awareness, if we can't step completely out of it and look at it as a definable object, I mean, imagine if you could step out of reality completely. I mean, maybe some sort of, we have this, like our imagination is so, um, our imagination kind of starts to break down. We think about like the multiverse. I'm not even talking about a multiverse because step out of the multiverses into an unreality and then look at the reality that you just inhabited. I mean, that's not possible, but just imagine you could do that. Well, then, and only then, can you define something because you can see the entire structure? Does that make sense? So um, if you're in the structure itself and you're trying to define the structure while being within it and influencing it and being a co-creator with it, being aware and the structure, you know, is essentially a process of awareness, then you'll never fully define it. So therefore it's irrational. If you step out of it and you can define it, if you have some sort of way to get out of it completely, you can look at it and say, oh, here's the entire essence of it. Here's its shape. Then you can have a rational discussion as far as 
at least understanding it because you're no longer part of it. So that's kind of the paradox of, of scientific and even spiritual endeavors is studying anything in this reality that we're part of. Well, everything's a part of that process, that evolutionary process of awareness that keeps expanding, changing, growing, you know, nothing's permanent. Everything's passing forms. Things come, you know, we come into existence for a time and then we go out. We presume that's the that's true of all of reality, but that's just our confusion, right? It's we're all in this process, and this process is inning and outing, right? Things are created, things are destroyed, things come back in, things go out, and that is the process. It's like a, a pluralistic monism, right? So let me know what you think about that, and I'll be interested to uh, read some of your comments.